Peggy 7. Ho Hokum is a game about uh, exploring uh, a world that doesn't explain itself. All of the strange things that happen are kind of the game slowly revealing itself to the player. You can say that it's colourful, you can say that it's exploratory, you can say that it has a creative, performative element to it. Um, I think you need to see it though. When Dick first sent me that first drawing and said, hey, let's make a game together, I don't think we had any idea that like six years later with a big animation and audio team, we'd still be making this game. It wasn't like, oh, let's make this game about this long, windy character that people ride on. The original idea that inspired her Hokum was just, could we make a video game? It wasn't like this was a game that was the game we've always wanted to make and we, we had it perfectly realised. It's been a long, strange, meandering journey. Sometimes you don't know, even though it's right in front of your face, you don't know what the best thing is. And then you wake up one day and you're like, it was there all the time. So this is the first piece of, uh, of Ho Hokum art that Dick sent me along with the sort of message, hey, let's make a game together, I've, I've drawn something. We just started to make these prototypes that were very loose, trying to get a sense of what it would feel like to manipulate all of this stuff. The art's evolving and we're trying new things in order to do things like give them more character. And then we introduce a character that's you. For me, this is, this is the start of, of, of what Ho Hokum is today. That was actually quite a hard leap to make to get rid of him and the player be the line. I remember you saying to me, this is really interesting, why do we need this guy? It's weird, isn't it? Because that is at the core of our idea. But actually, it, it felt like quite a brave or difficult thing to do, didn't it? I think some of our older ideas were more video gamey ideas that were kind of fighting against the art and the mood in the game. We really wanted the game to, to let you go wherever you wanted and, 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 and move around in the way that you want to move around. And that got us along the path of thinking about these things as real places. We want it to feel more like a real place than, in, than, than how some video games are in the sense that you have the freedom to go wherever you want there. It helps you to tune into the fiction of like you're in these places. You know, it reinforces the idea that you're not playing a video game to solve all these tasks. You're just in this place exploring and chilling out. I don't want to suddenly have bits of the game full of things that only make sense in, in, in that way that things in a video game make sense because it's a video game. Who cares why these barrels are rolling towards me on fire? It's a video game, it's fine, you know. I, I like everything in Hohokum to make sense on its own terms. As we've gone on, we've developed a sense of what's going to work where the two things sit, sit together better. In this prototype, the game at this point is still set in a series of chambers. We were still thinking very much in terms of like what happens in video games. Oh yeah, you have a race and you have to get through the next gate within a certain amount of time. And At the end of the race, the door opened, only the door didn't really go anywhere because it was kind of the end of the level, so it just let you out of the level. This is the epiphany. This is the bit your brother was playing. He won the race, he broke out the level, and then he went, this is the best thing ever, just flying around outside here. That was kind of our epiphany moment of like, hey, it's really fun just to be this thing, just to fly around and, and have this kind of stunt kite experience of pinging off things and going really fast and wobbling around corners. People ask, what are my objectives? And I find that so telling that that's a thing that it's okay, it's okay to ask almost, but it's kind of normal in a video game that you have objectives. Like when, when I pick up a book to read a book, I don't think, what are my objectives? I think I'm going, to, I'm going to go wherever this writer's taking me. If I don't like it, I'll stop reading it. Rather than, oh, now I have to absorb all of this like, information about what I'm supposed to be doing and figure out how to do it well, it's just like, yeah, just, just, just don't worry about it. Chill out. A lot of people are like, oh, great. Fantastic. That's something that, in playtest, that's something that I'm always looking out for, is people doing that. It's something that I do a lot in lots of other video games. You know, I find myself just wanting to wander around looking at all the cool stuff in a bit of a game rather than do all the objectives I'm supposed to do. And I like the idea of those object of having some, something for people to get their teeth into that they feel like they're supposed to be doing, but actually you keep wanting to just go off and muck around. Makes the goofing off feel, feel like more valuable or in, a, in a weird way. I don't think that when you're working on this stuff, you have some kind of grand vision like that to like, oh, we're gonna completely reinvent what a video game can be. I think you're just, you're just trying to make something that's cool and seeing where they go. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, it's going to blow people's minds. <laughs> <laughs>